Hello, everyone. Welcome to our next session. And here we are with Genesis 24. As it says, God's provision for Isaac, but focusing the title in a different direction, Rebecca, the firstborn from among the nations, I'm sorry, the first from the, among the nations, to become a child of Abraham. So I think the purpose of the Abrahamic narrative has to remain in focus here, right? It's important for us to not treat these stories as if they exist in a vacuum by themselves, unattached from what's happened here. We're not just being introduced to Rebecca here for the sake of the problem introduced before that. Isaac needs a wife. It's everything that's happened in spectrum up into this particular moment as we're now transitioning over to Isaac. So remember, part of the Abrahamic blessing of Genesis 12, all peoples of the earth will be blessed through you. Rebecca is a part of Abraham's extended family, but she's not under the umbrella of the covenant, right? I mean, Ishmael is a direct descendant now of Abraham, and yet he is not considered to be a part of the Hebrew people that descend from Abraham through Isaac. Isaac is who your seed will be called by. So Ishmael becomes a people all to himself that is now considered to be a part of the Gentile nations. And Rebekah would have remained such, as does the rest of her kin, who are not a part of this covenantal blessing. It only happens through this uh, interrelation by virtue of marriage to Isaac and now propagating the seed from him. But of course, that requires an act of faith on Rebecca's part in wanting to become a part of this wonderful story here. So going over to the left side of the screen, all these purple blocks are simply meant to be seen as what the golden block says, and that all the stories between Genesis 12 and 24 are of Abraham's interactions with people. Notice that every single one of them are all about his interactions with other people. And on the far right side of the screen, for red blocks, clearly these stories did not end well for those who interacted with Abraham. And for the purple block or uh, blue blocks, there are examples of how positive interactions interplayed there. And in many of those, what's intertwined with that are moments of priestly action on the part of Abraham. So again, priests in the Old Testament, as we see First conceptualized in Genesis 1, if Adam is a priest in the garden temple, is that they represent creation before God and God before his creation. They are the intercessory link that binds the two together so that they can interface, right? So with that, uh, if we've seen the covenantal connections between Adam, Noah, and now Abram turned Abraham, we understand Abraham has a priestly mandate with his people to the nations, and that's what Moses picks up on in Exodus 19 when he tells them the words of God that if they will be obedient, then God will make them his kingdom of priests, understood parenthetically to be to the nations. So just to give an example or two here, Adam and Pharaoh, or Abraham and Pharaoh in Genesis 12, when he goes into Egypt, when there's a famine, clearly Pharaoh does not receive blessings but cursings because of Abraham's deception. And then Abraham and Lot. Abraham's family is divided. Lot is not part of this covenantal blessing yet, but as long as he remains uh, with Abraham, he receives by proxy of proximity to Abraham this blessing. But because he couldn't overcome his own pride and get his servants to be more submissive to just living humbly, uh, even though there's a scarcity of resources at times between Abraham's flocks and Lot's flocks, Lot decides he wants to go at it on his own. And so with that, it leads him into the threshold of Sodom and Gomorrah, and the rest is history. So because of that, and it's not Abraham's fault necessarily, but Abraham did not strive with Lot to remain with the family, instead allowing him to go on his own way. But then we have a positive example of Abraham and the kings, and also the king, Melchizedek. So there were kings who benefited from Abraham's raid against the eastern coalition of kings under Ketaleomer, uh, who led that coalition and decimated the land of kingdom, uh, Canaan. Sodom and Gomorrah took Lot as a captive and so forth. And so in that story, uh, those kings are defeated, but the kings of Canaan are blessed by Abraham, even though he wants nothing from them or to even be affiliated with them. But he returns all that was stolen. And so with that, he gets the opportunity to meet Melchizedek. And Melchizedek blesses Abraham, who then in turn blesses Melchizedek by offering him a tenth of what was tied. But notice, right after this story comes this covenantal moment when Abraham receives more information from God about what God's plan is with him and how he's going to bring it to pass, and he executes this priestly action of carving animals and manipulating blood, 
for the sake of this covenantal moment when Adam and a or uh, God and uh, Abraham are supposed to walk through it together, even though God does it all by himself. So then we get to Abraham and Lot again, but now it's the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, before that, we have this moment where Abraham is yet acting again in a priestly manner by taking knife and applying it to flesh, removing the foreskin, and with that, carving in a covenant into his flesh and all the males of his house. I'm just using those green blocks as a way of illustrating more and more Abraham's priestly actions in all of this. But the real thrust behind this is Abraham's interactions, both positive and negative. So I could go on here, but what I want to do is just drive this home by getting us down to the final block here with Abraham and Eleazar interacting with each other over the concept of Isaac's future wife. And so with that, Eleazar is sent to then find this wife. And in the process, the servant yields himself over to Yahweh as he has learned from his master and has now become a follower of Yahweh himself. And he is trusting, as his master has learned to do, that God will be faithful. God will indeed provide the answer to the problem. And that, of course, Eleazar could attempt to try to do this himself and be like Cain and the descendants of Cain, act like the seed of the serpent rather than the seed of the woman, acting like Adam even in the garden and seizing the ability to define what's right and what's wrong for himself rather than trusting and following in the wisdom that God would provide. But instead, he prays and says, God, please be merciful. I don't know who I'm supposed to find, but if you will show me a sign that you indeed have found the one, then I will follow that and I will go with the one that you send to me. And so he puts that out there and Yahweh honors this. And by virtue of that, Rebecca, who is a Gentile, is brought into the family and like a new Eve becoming the mother of all living, as goes the seed of Abraham through Isaac, because no children belong to Isaac yet and the covenant cannot be passed to another generation until she bears him sons. And now she does. And she's brought into the blessed genealogy of the Messiah and uh, so forth. And of course, becomes the mother of Israel, literally, as Jacob is born from her womb. So with that in mind, it's important for us to see the connections between Genesis 12 all the way to this moment and how this has been a spectrum of stories building on human interaction, Abraham with other people, the lessons learned and the negative ones and the lessons learned and the positive ones to get us to this moment to show us one more and final human interaction, Abraham to his servant and how this pattern of Abraham fully surrendering to God has been passed on to Eleazar. And in this moment where Eleazar has the right to shine, the chance to shine, he does so because he submits himself fully and God blesses. And through that, nations are blessed. Mission one is accomplished, at least as far as the next step in the path to bringing it out to the nations. And it's a promise and hope that God will do this on a far larger scale in the future. So hopefully that's helpful. See you in the next session.